Hello and welcome to DCP SideQuest episode number 51. I almost forgot the number. Wow. Briar is in his tri Charlie's Angels um, setup right there, right? If you're watching <laughs> the live right. version. That's right, yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> is that a new purchase? That is, that is. I got the Zapper Ooh. from the uh, from the retro game store near my house, as well as a copy of Duck Hunt. And nice. uh, is it Hogan's Alley? Hogan's? I can't remember the other game I bought. Hmm. <laughs> uh, been... And then quickly... Quickly found out that the zapper doesn't work on my small CRTV because it's got a flat screen. Ooh. Oh, no I was kind of bummed about that. It doesn't reflect. Yeah, that I don't laser. know. I don't know why. I don't know the science behind why the zapper doesn't work on the small flat screen, small tube TV. So I thought it would work because okay. it's a tube TV. So I, I got to try it on the bigger one because luckily I got two. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, do you get two so you can dual wield? Can you be like, bam, 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 bam. Two TVs so I can play two different games at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, that, 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 is, that is peak performance right there. He's just, you know, making sure he's got all his options covered. That's all. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> your, your collection's been growing, Briar, right? I, you know, it's been fun to kind of, because I like, keep finding stuff that either I wanted when I was a kid and I never got a chance to play, or stuff that I did get that has like massive memories. Like this week, I found Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. Mm. Um, I saw that for tweet. you Europeans, it's the game that was that's the console that we were playing while you guys were playing with those like mini computer things that are weird. Playing <laughs> 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 like Sinclair and your Vectrix or whatever the hell you were doing oh, over there. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyhow, the TMNT. Uh, my mother had given me when I was a little kid for a Christmas present, and I found it early. And I weaseled my way into the bottom of the box and pulled out the cartridge and was playing it for like two weeks before Christmas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How did you hide it? <laughs> well, maybe she didn't know that you were playing it. I, I, no, she didn't know I was playing it because uh, I she was a she, she you know she was a working mother, a single mother. Uh, so a lot of the time I spent home alone. Gotcha. Which you can imagine was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before she would come home, I'd sneak it back into the box and then reseal the box. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Some work in between cartridge so, uh, plays. <laughs> a lot of memories with that one. And I've been playing that. And that game doesn't get a whole lot of love on the internet. But a lot of people think it's a terrible game. But I love it. Huh. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah, I learned something new from that as well when you put your post up. Because um, obviously I didn't realize that, but then uh, um, Connor replied, and he was saying about like how all of the ones in the game are obviously with red bandanas as opposed to the colored ones. Because yeah. apparently the old school comics were like super violent. I didn't even realize that. I, there was my there was me blissfully just assuming that all Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had the the four different colored bandanas for all eternity. But apparently there's like some underground like super sinister version. Yeah, I didn't really. Know. I knew that there was a comic book that like predated the cartoon, but I didn't know it was as different as it was. And I didn't know mm. that the colored bandanas, like each one of the turtles, has a different color. Like Michelangelo has yellow, and Donatello mm. has mm. purple. That was an inven invention of the of the cartoons, probably because they assumed that all kids are stupid mm. and they wouldn't be able to tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> but the comic books, apparently, I think the comic books were black and white anyway. But ah. Uh. Huh. Um, I guess the, like they were all had the same color bandanas in the comic books, mm -hmm. which I didn't know. That was new to me. So the cover of DMNT, all the turtles are wearing red bandanas, but the actual game has the different colors for each turtle. Hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, so they are actually right. right uh, they're oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Do huh. these fall under turtle facts? Yeah. TMNT yes. turtle facts. <laughs> I like turtles. <laughs> turtle the facts. more you know. <laughs> <laughs> love it oh man uh so what's going on this week what are we uh so aside from week... aside from crazy uh you know social injustice and and yeah protesting and well all there's that. that yeah for sure well, so, well sony sony have now decided to to because obviously last week uh a lot of stuff was pushed out to kind of make way for messaging and whatnot but this week sony have decided to reschedule their future of gaming event to june the 11th uh june 11th at, okay 
Yeah, in the UK, that's 9 p.m. So I guess for you guys, that would be uh, 1 p.m., I think. Oh, no, so whatever Pacific time is. I don't know, time zones. Convert from UK. 9 p.m. UK, you can work it out yourself. Anyway, point is, <laughs> June June 11th, their, their massive, awesome Future of Gaming event, which, sincerely, I hope actually has gameplay this time and not more CG trailers. Seriously. That would be really cool. Um, yeah. I wouldn't mind the odd CG trailer, but give me some gameplay. Give me some actual, actual gameplay. Because this is the one that everyone's been hyping up, because obviously... You know, we've, we're in that kind of weird position because obviously there's lots and lots of different events happening anyway. Microsoft, we know, had their kind of early event, which didn't really show any gameplay. They have got their July event, which is the one that's supposed to be first party stuff, which I hope they will show gameplay. But in between that, obviously, all eyes are on Sony because up until now, like Sony have probably been the most quiet. Everyone's been talking about stuff through their blog posts. Microsoft and Sony just love to kind of throw out fancy words that I have no idea what they even mean. So uh, for the for the for the for the idiots out there, I'm hoping I can just sit back and watch this event and just enjoy some nice colors and great gameplay. Yeah, I want to see the new games. I want to see new games that we don't know about yet. Mm -hmm. I want to see what the launch lineup is going to be. I don't know if we'll find that out at the yeah. press conference, but I also want to see what games are going to be uh, remastered, so to speak, for the launch of the new mm -hmm. console. Like I, I'm really interested to find out what the what the form factor of this thing is going to be. I know some people care, some people don't care about what the console actually looks like, but that's always mm -hmm. one of the fun things for me. Oh, I love that! Yeah, yeah. Like actually see what this device is going to look like and how they've, you know, how they've built it and you know that kind of stuff. It's just kind of cool. You you start and imagining then, uh, it on your bookshelf. That's why you want to be able to see but, it. Well, <laughs> like the Xbox One. Ugh, fuck me, Xbox Series X. Like I do like try and imagine how that thing's gonna fit on my bookshelf because I, I can't picture it right now because it's such an odd shape. Yeah. Um, and I, I've I gotta say I've hated the PlayStation uh, PlayStation Four uh, industrial design for one reason, and that's because the back of it is slanted from the top yeah. to the bottom inward, so that if you are somebody like me who's constantly changing cables. You can't just like look over it and see the ports. Yeah. You have mm -hmm. to like flip it over and pull it out or whatever. Yeah, can you we have please to leave the slants behind. Please. That's 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 <laughs> that's, that's not it's it's almost like that. I, I almost think in, in the development process of the PS4, they have this stack design that was just normal and vertical, right? And then someone was like, looks kind of cool, but looks kind of like the Xbox. So I was like, I've got an idea. <laughs> and they just push it like <laughs> Yes, that's it. We're in mastermind, and they're just like, "Yep, we'll do it." We've had, never had a sliding console. It'll be great. And then uh, it looks not. cool. It's just really inconvenient. Like it you're is constantly fucking with cables, like I am. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've actually I also like my my setup to be. Yeah, I, I've really come to appreciate this the Xbox form factor for that very reason. Mm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Xbox looks cool too. I, uh -huh. I think all the versions of this Xbox have looked cool. Yeah, to me, uh, except you for know, the first one. Sony, Sony need to, yeah. Sony have, Sony have had a couple of generations of like bookie designs because even the yeah. PS3 was this weird bread bin, right? Oh, that's and I'm right. Just like, as as somebody that like, I'm not like full on OCD, but when it comes to, like my my setup, I like things to be very very organized. So I like there to be like clean lines, yeah. organized. Like yeah. That. So when I had the when I had the PS3, I had the dilemma before where it was like it was like Xbox. a clam, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was that. But then but then I was like, all right, how do I line up an Xbox 360, um, a PS3? And a Wii, oh no, Wii U at the time, which was already a weird mismatch of shapes. But at least the Wii U and the Xbox had the nice flat front, so I could kind of do this staggered look. But then it was just like weird. I, it, it was a nightmare, basically. Just give us a block, give us a block, and just yeah. that's it. Well, nice, I like nicely I detailed like block. Have you seen yeah. that render that they've been showing? Of it almost looks like a spaceship, where it's almost like a V shape. Yeah. Like I don't think that's what it's going to look like. But if it did look like that, I'd be pretty excited about it because it's. It's flat. It's obviously gonna fit on fine on a shelf, mm. but it looks cool. Like I don't think Sony's ever made an attractive, uh, an attractive yeah. home console like that. Like if you're original go, PlayStation yeah. Gray kind of, mm. I don't know. Good. It never appealed to me that much. Now the PlayStation Two was better, but it wasn't like beautiful. The PlayStation Three, the piano black was kind of neat, but it just it attracted so much dust. And the one I still have because my original. Your fat PlayStation that cost six hundred fucking dollars when I bought it <laughs> broke, <laughs> and I replaced oh. it with like their the their final generation of the PlayStation Three Slim that has like a sliding top. Yeah, yeah. that was not too bad. Yeah, yeah, that was one. nice. I don't, also, yeah. I don't like it that oh, much. It's, also, I think the PS Two looked really nice personally. Yeah, the I, nice, nice highlights. Much. You know, the blue and black on there. Mm. I did like the little detail where if you flipped it on the side, you could. You could the little PlayStation emblem. You could actually 
rotate uh, it. Yeah, rotate it. Yeah. Right. That was a that was a neat little detail. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'd like to see some when I saw those those shots of what they were like rumors to what the PS5 is looking like. I'm like, yeah. oh dear God, because I get it. <laughs> Initially, it's like, oh cool, it's like space tech, you know, it's different. Mm. But that same dilemma, like after two years, you're going to be like, how the hell is this thing supposed to fit anywhere and not stick out? Yeah, well, in two years they'll have a redesign anyway. Yeah, yeah back to a box. Five slim, then the PlayStation Five Ultra. And the PlayStation and the Xbox, 5 Xbox Series Pro. X Slim 2.0 XYZ. Oh, God. <laughs> kind of name getting Can we all take a collective way. moment to say fuck you and your naming conventions, Xbox? <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, you can play your console, but could you name it better? Can we like figure this out? Because, man, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. Trying to stick to ones should... and all that is just, it's kind of rough. <laughs> yeah. They should have just called it Series X. At least that would have been enough. But like Xbox Series X. It's, it's, it's madness, it's madness. But it anyway, is. PlayStation event, obviously, we're, yeah. we're, we've got that to look forward to. There's some cool stuff. I feel like we should play PlayStation Bingo, but we'll play it afterwards because there are, okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cheat in this game because there's a couple of things, there's some rumors going around that are looking quite likely. So I think we should touch on those first. And then we, when the rumors are out, then we can do bingo with what's left. Oh, okay. a couple of, the couple of main things we're talking about, um, Teft, I know you'll be super happy about this one. Is uh, Demon Souls remake, Bloodborne reenvisioning? Oh well, Bloodborne we'll get to in a minute. So, oh wait, so, so, I haven't heard about Demon Souls. Okay, no, so either. Demon so Demon Souls is the, is the is the leading one. Bloodborne uh -huh. not a great deal, isn't it? No, no. Supposedly the rumors going around are that the event will end with the Demon Souls remake, but the Demon Souls one is uh, behind, being handled by Bluepoint. Uh, again, all this is rumor being handled, handled by Bluepoint. Um, who obviously did like Shadow Colossus and whatnot, and then in a speak in a talk they had a while ago when they were talking about, it, they were saying that like um, the remake for Shadow of Colossus, they kind of deemed that sort of like a, a remaster. But they said what they're working on next is what they would call a re envisioning because it's even more so than they did before. Um, mm. So a lot of the rumors and the kind of job listings going around there suggest that Demon Souls, whereas there are rumors for Bloodborne, which is said to be um, you know PC, PS5 upscale visuals, upscale graphics, improved loading times, quality of life improvements, the kind of typical remaster thing. Whereas Demon's Souls, because it's so old, it's supposed to be like complete re-envisioning. So obviously there'll be, you know, it won't just be bringing it up to current, you know, current standards. There'll obviously be some nice new additions and whatnot. So that. That would like, be amazing. I never played it on the mm. PS3 and I, I've thought about buying a PS3 just to play it, but I'm like, then mm. I got that PS3 laying around, and I just, yeah. I feel like it's on the verge of getting remastered, but then people are like, nah, it's staying there, it's staying on PS3. You don't own a PS3? Not anymore. Got really? rid of it a long time ago. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so, the fact that there's a legit rumor, or not, I mean, you know, legit, mm -hmm. in quotations, uh, about Demon Souls, that makes me very excited, because again, I never yeah. played it, and I would love to play that as the one that kicked things yeah, off. Yeah, there's... There was a couple of other things. There was like a, a Blue Point tweet at one point. They kind of, well, there was one where they they just sort of did like a cryptic tweet. I can't remember the, all the wording, but like people could kind of got like three different game references from that. One of them was like Castlevania. One of them was Legend of Dragoon. The other one was uh, uh, Demon Souls. But then there was another thing as well where like there was like a loading where there was a, there was a, a basically a blank slate that they put up, which they didn't see it's taken down, but it was like a it just said title in what looked like Comic Sans, but in the corner it had like fast loading dot dot dot, and then had a picture of a flower, which people have said looks remarkably like the soldier's lotus flower in Demon Souls. So there's a lot of like hints and whatnot that have been mm. kind of going around. So it looks cool. yeah. So so apparently from kind of people that were sort of like suggesting rumors and stuff, they're saying that that will be like one of the kind of things to kind of round out the the PlayStation event. Supposedly. That's still one of those games that needs a remake the most, right? Because it's yeah. definitely it's yeah. the oldest one. It's the one that least people have played. It's the one that didn't get a re-release on the PS4. It's not mm. on PC, right? Mm. It was only on PS3. It was a PS3 it's, exclusive. It's exclusive. Yeah. So like of all those Souls type games, like that being the original one too, that kind of started the the revolution. Mm. Um, that's a really exciting thing. Yeah, I want to play it. Yeah. I, I, I've yeah. been like I've been super close to buying a PS3 just to play that game and stream it, and then I backed off because I was like, I bet a remaster's coming. And then a year mm. later, I'm like, I bet a remaster's coming. And then a year <laughs> later, I bet a remaster's coming. Yeah, they remastered Dark Souls One, right? So like, yeah. But Dark Dark Souls One didn't Dark Souls One come out on the PS4? Or did that come out on the PS3 as well? That came out on the PS3 and X3. Came out on the PS3, but didn't. they remastered everything with uh, in celebration of Dark Souls 3. Yeah. Mm. 
a yeah. remastered. Yeah. They did it on PC too. They had that. That game came out on PC as well. Dark yeah, but it was good. very problematic. So they needed some things to fix yeah. on that. So that yeah. that remaster needed to happen as well. And they put on the Switch. Mm. Yeah. True. True. Right. I'm pretty sure yeah, they put on the right. Switch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure they did. Yeah, yeah. Does it's it run? run it, it can't run at sixty on the Switch, can it? It's got to run at thirty. Mm, I'm not sure. I haven't. I'm not too sure. I, I've heard from people they run. It runs quite well, but I haven't seen like how it runs. Like it's that, got a so. good. It's got a good spirit. You know, it really tries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It's it's, 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 it's hard to the right it's place. The, it's the, it's the, <laughs> precisely, it's the most important thing. Most important thing. <laughs> and then your other title that is uh, obviously i mean this one is kind of an obvious one here but like and there's been like a lot of chats about it but like the other rumor is that we'll see i don't know whether it'll be in trailer or gameplay but we'll see horizon zero dawn 2 announced uh at that's Netflix, exciting supposedly yeah um, so that's a rumor that's rumors. getting more and more real yeah yeah i mean like well because if you gonna sort of go back a while ago like when when horizon zero dawn first came out the original plan was for it to be a uh, a, a kind of a long running series anyway like initially they had like a trilogy plan but like until the first game sold that wasn't really signed off but then obviously when it did really well they they were they obviously kind of moved forward so they have they have plans to continue with this um so that makes sense the other, a couple of rumors going around for it supposedly there may be like a co-op component to it as well uh which would mm -hmm. be quite interesting because cool. you know you think about that world where like it's basically monster hunter with robot dinosaurs right so it would definitely work in co-op. That would be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, not 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 too much else is is known. And this will be that. a PlayStation Five game. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they haven't said whether it would be cross gen. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't. I, I don't think the rumors have said whether it would be cross gen or not. So I would imagine PlayStation Five because they want to kind of push the tech and whatnot. But yeah, it depends on I, when it goes. I feel like anything that comes out in year one is going to be a cross gen game, right? Man, I hope it's not held. Back I don't know. PS4. Yeah, I sincerely hope not. That would suck. Uh, I don't know. Mm. I mean, how long have developers had this generation, like this upcoming generation, with this hardware in hand to develop for it specifically? That's a good question. I feel like it, it hasn't been mm. long. Yeah, well, true, true, true. I mean, they know the development timelines take two, three years minimum to really mm. put out something that's going to yeah. have some polish to it. It so, could also yeah. be that they announce Horizon Zero Dawn to... And it comes out in 2022. True, true. I do, I do feel like they're not going to yeah. want to do a cross gen for that one because one of the things, is like you know, the original game was supposed to be a lot bigger, but obviously there was they were limited scope. So they have said that you know the rumors again, you know, the rumors are say that like this is going to be like gigantic in scope. So if it's going to be that big, you're obviously going to need some power behind it. So I feel like they would, they probably will just push it on PS5 so they can do what they want with it. But who knows? Yeah. yeah. I, it, <laughs> That would sell consoles, mm, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People would be like, "Yeah, I want to play Horizon Zero Dawn too," because that was a great title on PlayStation Four, the original, a leading title to make people be interested in actually playing it on PS Five. Because I'm hoping that the tech just wouldn't even be possible on PS Four, so the PS Five mm. version is a necessity. I I think I think that'd be amazing. Let me ask you this: Does the does the knowledge that Horizon Zero Dawn down down what Dawn. down Horizon, Horizon Zero down. down Dawn is coming to the PC? Does that make you think? Should I play this on PlayStation Five or should I wait for the PC version? For me personally, I think the PS Five version is going to be just as good as the PC version on launch. You know. Like there's going to be a certain parody with like ray tracing and all that mm. at launch, you know, three, four years down the road. That's not going to be the case, obviously. But with launch games, I think it's going to be fun. I also don't think they're going to even though they're, they're, they're bringing Horizon 1 to PC, like um, they even said like an interview, like Herman Hulse said, like they, they 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 brought Horizon because they felt like it was, it was a good fit. But they say that doesn't mean to say that future AAA games from PlayStation are always necessarily going to do that. And like, while Microsoft are heavily pushing the like play anywhere, like we don't care, you can buy our console or you can just play our games on PC. I feel like PlayStation is still very much going to hold on to the fact that they are in the, in the console war, so to speak, like a market leader in, in terms of like the, the, the position they hold. So I feel like with them, they're probably going to like say, you know, you Horizon Zero Dawn 2 comes to PS5 first. If they want to push it on PC, I could see them do it like a year later. So then they're just, force people into that platform um sure yeah which i'm, I'm i mean i'll be completely fine with but hey you know i i, I can't if, if this happens i can't wait to see the um 
um, it's going to be great. The, the Sony, the Sony Pony's reactions, like they already got angry when Horizon Zero Dawn came to PC. If they announced Bloodborne's also coming to PC, they'll be like, "I quit, <laughs> I quit PlayStation. I'm never oh, buying I've, your console again." <laughs> I, bl- I blocked all those people when I was doing my mass block for the All Lives Matter people. Nice. Fair. Uh, yes, <laughs> I just, I just figured I'd knock out both groups in one fell swoop. Get them all done. <laughs> they are the same group. So yeah. Hey, real quick, Briar. I think your speakers are on because I'm hearing some bleed. Oh, my bad. Yep. They're off now. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like to really hear myself. <laughs> Boy, I was I like, I wasn't hear hearing it before. Drop, like, <laughs> <laughs> more and more bleed was creeping in. I'm like, something's going on. Uh, so, <laughs> wait. So, so is, Bloodborne. I'm gonna, I want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Bloodborne confirmed. Like that's confirmed now, right? It's not, not confirmed. confirmed. Not yeah. confirmed. It's it, heavily rumored. Heavy, right. Yeah. At this point. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so the heavy rumors are that that would also be announced during the event. Um, it is, I don't know, it's weird that they would announce them both because it seems like a sort of like stolen thunder thing. But like the the blood the bloodborne rumor is that whereas Demon Souls is a is a re envisioning because obviously there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Bloodborne is more so just a remaster. So yeah, it would be HD visuals, um, new textures. It would be um, improved loading times, quality of life improvements, 4K, and also ultra wide support. Um, and that's, I think, all the rumors so far. It's God. good I did not wear pants because they would be very tight right now. <laughs> I, wow! I hope it's real. Oh, you're going to fix the only problem I have with that game? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, an improved frame rate, obviously, yeah. Yeah, I would hope, I right? will buy that game again twice. I will buy a physical copy for the PlayStation 5, and I will buy a digital copy for my computer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that game dearly, but it has such a glaring flaw. And it's such a. PS4 I actually hardware. just booted that game up on. Uh, was it yesterday or Saturday? Um, again, just because like I kept hearing these rumors, so I wanted to like, like, is my remembrance of this as bad as it? You know, is it really that bad? Oh, it's that yeah. bad. <laughs> that frame rate is garbage. <laughs> I wanted. To, I, want, I want them to release it because I, I I never got to play Bubble, and I know I could. Oh, I play it, but like I want to play it. Don't. Yeah. Wait for the good version. If they if they the launch better version, I should say. Like it would be amazing if they launched a PS5 version at at launch with the PS5, uh, yeah, just to amazing. just to have and also PC. I don't think there's any reason to hold it on to not have it on PC as well. Like I let people play an amazing game. The game is what four years old now. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like- you're not going to lose any sales by, by moving it now. Like, like sure, I, I can understand when a brand new game comes out, like Sony being like, we're going to just have it on one place because, um, you know, that's, that's where... Yeah, exactly, what a right? But like, all or hacking out. game that would be, too. I remember when I bought mm. my first PlayStation... I think it was my first PlayStation 4. It might not have been my first PlayStation 4. I think I bought three. One of my PlayStation 4s came with The Last of Us Remastered. Mm. Oh. And, like, that was a pretty nice add-in, you know? It'd be cool. Mm. A Bloodborne remastered add-in would be a nice. That would nice be really nice. Game. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Uh, also, Horizon Zero Dawn as well. What if they redid like a remaster so it's both on PC and PS5? Yeah, you know? yeah. True, true, true. Maybe that would be their tidy over. It would be like, hey, you know, we're going to do Horizon Zero Dawn 2 in a couple years, so replay number one now on PS5. Like, I, think, I don't think I've ever played a game where I wanted mouse controls as much as I did in Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, yeah? Yeah, for aiming the bow, like, there, it was mm. so... You have to be so precise to, like, do that well that, man, like, any time I missed, I was like, I would have made that shot with a mouse. <laughs> yeah. It was partly because of the frame rate dipping at times from all the stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. It, if mm. What I remember, it wasn't a like locked 30. Or, I mean, it didn't feel like a super smooth lock 30 in the middle of battles. Battles felt like it tanked the frame rate. But I mean, yeah, the game down to cinematic 25. Yeah, exactly. You know. Cinema. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's so the rumors, exciting, right? Exciting times. So we got so so let, let's have a let's have a let's have a little a little bingo, a little PlayStation bingo. What else would what do you what do you think we might see? And then we can revisit this next week and see if we're correct. Now that we've is taken a, those out of the is a price cheating, is that too obvious? Like here's here's the price. I don't think anything's obvious right now. We can do okay. a price bingo. What do we think it's okay. cost? Separate price bingo. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Three ninety nine ninety nine. That's American dollars. That's freedom bucks right there. <laughs> okay, okay. Freedom okay. bucks. <laughs> freedom bucks. 
Uh, what do you think? God, see, I think it's going to be 400 also. Hmm. Hmm. I, 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 so here's the thing. I'm going to say this. I don't hope it's this because it's it's astronomical, but I hope just for the memes, they charge 599 US dollars. Oh my God. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the, the, what was it? Was it 2004? Aspirational. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but do you do you remember the the famous the famous PlayStation conference back in the day? The one that we, we did the the funny the funny meme edit with the like yeah. flip over the crowd for massive damage and the Ridge Racer, and he's like, <laughs> you can buy this for the bargain price of five hundred ninety nine US dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, right. there are there are speak there are talks though that um it might might be potentially more expensive. And also, if you guys are serious about getting it, when they do announce it and pre-orders go open, be ready because apparently there was a news article the other day saying that because of stuff that's going on at the moment, there may be a shortage of supply oh, at yeah. launch. So be ready with your pre-order. Like, bam! Mm. Yeah. Who am I going to pre-order through? Yeah. Who are you guys going to pre-order? Prepared? Not GameSpot. Uh, Probably Amazon. <laughs> I normally go to Amazon. Or like or in the UK we've got game as well, which is like our, our UK game shop. I'll probably pre-order from one of the I tend to I tend to place place like a couple of pre-orders just to make sure I've got it locked in and then once I get closer, then I'll obviously only keep one of them. That's the play. I've always right there. I've always liked doing the GameStop pre-order because I like going on launch night and like mm. hanging out with everybody who's like super excited for the new console or the new game. But I am oh, not yeah. convinced that GameStop is gonna be around in November. <laughs> I'm not oh, so damn. sure. I think I might do Best Buy this time because I do mm. want to go to a launch event and maybe that'll be like the best I could do around here. Best Buy is a good yeah. option. Yeah. Socially distanced Plus, launch event where like the queue is even longer because it's yeah, exactly. every single person. <laughs> <laughs> but you could also get the like the, the hardware protection because historically, you know, launch consoles tend to have some sort of issue that they didn't iron out. So if you get yeah, that. Good point. You know, that way if it did break in a year, you could be like, Give me a new one, Best Buy. If it's six hundred dollars, I might actually consider not buying it. Yeah, I mean that's that is a, that's a, I, I, I don't I actually hope it's not a price because that would just be ridiculous. But um, yeah, it's it's weird. It's weird because like some companies like Microsoft have always historically sold their console at a loss. I mean everyone everyone sells consoles at a loss, but, but I mean like I feel like Sony's one of those kind of proud companies that's a lot they're, they're often like oh you know our console is so good we can sell it more because people will buy it anyway whereas some companies like you know we're gonna have to take the l on this kind of thing so i don't yeah. i don't know it's, it's really hard to it's really hard to say so you have made some wild choice in the past but yeah 4.99 i'll piss and moan about it but i'll probably still get it six mm. 5.99 like i really strongly consider not getting it at a launch like i really mm. strongly consider it especially if like they don't have a launch lineup that is like incredibly compelling Hmm. Mm. I mean, I really yeah, want to play Godfall. Of course, that's on PC too. Yeah, right? that's on PC. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th I forgot about that because yeah, I didn't. I didn't even realize until the other day because because when they first announced it, they just they did that kind of typical thing where they were like, announced it on PlayStation, didn't say it's exclusive, just said it's on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. But yeah. now that I know it's on PC, I feel like I'm probably just gonna play it on PC. Yeah, yeah. And like, uh, if they come out with a bunch of trailers on Thursday, hmm. but like. None of the new stuff, like if it's all remastered stuff that's coming out like at launch time with a couple of like throwaway titles, you know how mm. launch titles tend to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's six hundred dollars. What are you trying to say I'll about Mac? Like, uh, Mac one and two are an institution of amazing incredible. gaming. <laughs> you're a narc and you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Talking smack on Mac. Come on. Next one of the gaming greats. Goes gaming out in history. Greats. He literally sits there right next to Mario. Yeah. We have to have Knack 3, obviously. Actually, that's oh. that's one of my predictions, is we're seeing Knack 3. Knack 3. At the event. Okay. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to say $4.99 for the console price. Okay. Because yeah. Briar took mine, what I thought. Eric's going wilding, wilding out. I'm gonna say sure. $4.99, and they, you know, they take a loss, but it's still kind of expensive. You know, for me, I'd say I'd pay up to 800 bucks because I want that console and I want the games that are coming with it. Mm. But that's as a streamer. If I was not a streamer, 500 would be my max. Even mm. as a streamer, though, it's like if they don't have anything at launch that is like super compelling. But they like will. The good coming to 21, 22, they will. Like what? 
Like what at launch? No, no. I mean, like they will at some point. So I'm like, I might as well yeah, just get that console. Could there have been a price drop by then. Oh, in six months, I don't you think, think there's gonna be price. Yeah, nah, or a hardware revision. Well, what, what's think... coming in the first six months? What's coming in the first year? That so is like Godfall is supposed to be a launch title. Oh, launch, yeah, but it's exactly. not exclusive. It's P- oh, that's coming to PC as well. So what's yeah. exclusive to the PS5 that's gonna be in the first year that? Like mm. is really compelling that we know about right now. We don't. I don't think I know about anything right now. I, I think. I think right now the only thing that we because because they have because they haven't had their the game event. The only thing that we know know is on PS5 is Godfall, and obviously now we know Outriders because we know that's that's multi, that's cross that's just all platforms. Oh yeah. Um. So as outside of that, we don't actually know know of anything else on PS5. I don't think. Um, Destiny Two. Good point. Uh, Destiny Two. If they brought that over, so you have a nice 60 FPS, but on a console. That's not worth eight hundred dollars. <laughs> ah. True. <laughs> that, no, you raise, you raise a good point. I guess, I guess, I guess that question we won't be able to answer until we sort of see it on on uh, Wednesday. Because I, I guess that's the idea of this uh, this event. Because I would imagine once they've dropped that event, they'll probably maybe if they if they give us a price, then obviously they'll open up pre-orders, right? So um, that'll be the make or break. Because that that'll be when they show the stuff and they show like because ho- hopefully they do get it right. Hopefully they show a load of first party stuff to be like this is why you want to buy PlayStation and not just be like here's yeah. FIFA and here's random other sports games <laughs> like random my guess is there will be like there will be like two or three <laughs> games that are kind of launch exclusives mm. but they won't be like huge things it's not like god of war 2 isn't going to be a launch game right true true yeah right but th- so i mean if, it'd be cool if it was th- this is what i'm saying if they aligned horizon zero dawn 2 to be a launch title mm-hmm. f- specifically for ps5 and then they're be- like and then they're like, Incredible. also, we remastered Horizon Zero Dawn OG and put it on PC as well, mm. so you can have a taste and then be like, come buy this hardware. I think that would be smart. I don't What's know. the timing on Horizon Zero Dawn? When did the first one come out? Is it three years ago? Uh, 2017, yeah, yeah. Three years ago. Mm. The timing seems about right. Yeah, I mean, they had, all that, they had all that tech already developed for how the, the mechanics of the game work, so mm. they just had to build more game with a few more extra awesome things because they, they said like the majority of the or the pain of the development on that was building the actual mechanics for yeah. stripping pieces of armor yeah. off that took them it's like probably optimistic but i could see that happening maybe not at launch even even if it's in the first year that'd be a big big first year yeah, title. maybe like launch window and not launch day sure yeah um yeah that's true that's true hmm oh they did make a dlc i forgot about that yeah that's a good point carnival and chat said that Hmm. Uh, any more predictions? Like what? What do you? Okay. Any more bingo card things. Let's see. For eight hundred dollars, it's a better Blue Espresso. We for might me. see <laughs> Spider Man Two. A little Nespresso box. Spider Man Two. Spider Man Two. Yeah, from Interesting. Insomnia because the hmm. uh, first one was so was so was so uh, popular. Um, and uh, yeah, I, mean, I, feel, I feel like I feel like that's a that's a franchise they want to they want to they want to revisit, right? I mean, like it went down so well, and everyone loves superheroes right now. I feel like Spider Man. I don't know. Superheroes aren't really that hot right now. I don't know if it's the right time. Uh, maybe just I, putting my pulse on the finger of the world right now. I'm not feeling yeah, superheroes. True. <laughs> true. Maybe, maybe true, but I, I still feel like everyone's got time for Spidey. Everyone's got time for your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. I, I actually own that game. I still haven't played it yet. It's still sealed. It's a great, I want to play yeah, it. It's have a great game. I to haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah, I can't wait. You it's didn't finish it? I, no, I, st- I, I mean, I want to, but it was, it was, I think it came out. I can't remember. There was like so many things that came out around that time. So I started it and then... Um, I remember that. Yeah, that was a September yeah. Blitz. That was the Blitz of September. Yeah, right? that was it. Yeah. Just one of the other. That's that's the thing. With me and story games, unless, I'm like, unless I like literally sit down, I'm like, right, this, this is being played... Like the next few, three or four days, nothing but this, and I finish it. If I even take a small break, I, I know it's not like a story like game, like in the kind of normal sense, but like with well, those kind of games, if I take a small break, I'm not coming back. Like, I, I am guilty play. of this as well. Yeah. Yep. That's why like, for like every once in a while, I'll come back and like actually get back into it, but very yeah, rarely. It, just, it, take, it takes that thing. It's, it's so it's so difficult. That's why I, I need to. I need to be in that flow. So when it comes to like Last of Us, for example, like I'm just kind of taking a few days off from like the videos and which you know sit and just play it so I can get through it. Same for like Ghost because you know I'm trying to sort of make a more conscious effort because like last year there were so many games that I just 
I juggled so many and then there'll be times when I'm like, okay, cool, you know, I've jumped into this story game, but also there's this other loot based persistent game that needs my attention. And it's just like, yep, story game just fell on the wayside. So yeah. And then I'm when something's new, I want to, I want to be part of that zeitgeist conversation, mm. you know, like I like being able to talk about stuff when everybody's talking about it, you know, cause it's fun. It's weird talking about a game. Like if I started going off about Spider-Man right now, I'd be like, yeah, no shit, Briar. <laughs> <laughs> We came to that conclusion. Fucking yeah, years it was ago. fun when I played it a few years back. Totally yeah. remember that. Back in the 2010s, <laughs> before the world burned down. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. Any yeah, other that predictions? Is, that is a risky business. Any other predictions? Uh, hmm. I Do think we'll see God of War two. I don't think so. I think that's no. still yeah, too fresh. I, feel like too soon. I really, yeah, I, I would, I really want to, but I feel like it would almost be, it, it, you know, a, a dream announcement would be like, so you'd be like, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Bloodborne, Demon Souls. I'm just like, are they really going to do like, it's not the same kind of thing with Nintendo. It's like, would they really pack all their like big IPs into one presentation where they could be like, no, this is the year of Mario. You're going to hear about Mario next year when it's all about Zelda. So I feel like for them to, to kind of, blow their load so to speak in one in one presentation probably isn't gonna be uh <laughs> probably isn't gonna be be the thing do you think hmm. they're gonna announce any kind of new titles brand new I stuff hope so like new ips that's i, certainly uh, yeah, hope I really so. hope so yeah i i yeah. hope we get at least one announcement of an ip that's been in development but mm. not sony style where it's gonna be five years later when we finally get to play it like something that's yeah. been bacon and they're already they're just gonna trim off a little piece for us to have a taste and it'd be like okay yeah launch that would be really yeah that would like to because i mean that's the thing because it's, it's, it's like as we sort of saying before like as you start to get to like a new generation like i mean obviously there's still like so many fantastic games and whatnot but like one of the things that i always like so much about generation is like yes we've all got ips that we're super attached to we're like i want to see another god of war i want to see another soulsborne style game like definitely but i'm just like i'm always more excited about the new stuff it's the same principle i have with yeah. like when it comes to mm -hmm. when it comes to like loot based games everyone's like i want to hold onto my weapon i'm like i don't care about that weapon i've had that for two seasons Like, i want new stuff right so i'm definitely more excited about what they can do now um so yeah 100 percent. if they can show something like cool and crazy and like something we've never seen before that would be whew. yeah yeah because anytime you spend enough time with a franchise it's going to get old you know mm -hmm. yeah like you, you can't it's like the first movie in a in a series of movies is always the best movie because it was fresh and new like mm. every sequel is just building off of that it's never going to surprise and shock you as much as the first one did yeah mm -hmm. you well, know with the exception being like something like god of war where they just completely switch it up but still it was mm -hmm. they had to do some drastic changes for that to happen for that for that to work mm. with god of war and they had to execute oh, perfectly yeah. and they did they were able to do the hail mary and nail it um yeah uh, but I think Horizon Zero Dawn Two is would be the perfect title with this, and like I have no idea if that's even going to be a possibility for them to launch with that. But can you imagine? Because like that game had a huge amount of hype behind it. People, mm. people love it. You yeah. know, love the experience. I feel like yeah, I feel like PlayStation need to. They're gonna if they want to be competitive, they're gonna want to have some kind of notable IP because supposedly Halo Infinite is a launch title for Series X. So, and well, I know that's in some big, big energy right there. That's the thing, right? And I, I, I mean, I know in recent years, you know, Halo, you the, know that Halo thing right on the like, table. <laughs> like, <bam. laughs> but that's the thing. Like, I, I know, like in recent years, like Halo might not necessarily have kind of done everything people wanted to, but Halo is still a franchise that holds a lot of weight. Like, I feel like yeah. maybe if they mess it with Infinite, maybe then it'll start to go down the pan a bit. But I feel like Infinite is there's a lot of eyes on that. So the fact that that is a launch title, you can be like, all right, Series X might have it might be the only first ip the only um first party ip they launched with and the rest is like third party fair enough but if they have that in, in and of itself and playstation will suddenly say oh we're only launching with third party things you can also play on xbox then that's not very compelling so if they had if they could be like all right we see your halo infinite we raise you horizon zero dawn 2 then it's like bam all right now you got you got some you got a crazy november at that point exactly yeah 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 and then people will be like which console do i buy then then you're like uh oh yeah, but Halo's going to be on PC, though, right? Uh, yeah. True, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, 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 true. But still, like the it, the IP poll of mm, getting mm. excited about that stuff. I, I do feel like Halo's gone through a lot of fatigue, and Halo 5 definitely wasn't met with the reception. Yeah. You know, I was more interested in Infinite, though. Like, 
there's something about this one that has people kind of with their eyes on it just because it's it's mm. not a numbered sequel that infinite thing is kind of interesting like what are they going to do they've like, also what taken more time to develop Halo experience yeah. yeah yeah i think a lot of people are seeing it as like the redemption kind of story because you know, it's not it's not to say that halo has gone really bad but like it definitely you know for people that are and i'm not necessarily like the longest term halo fan like i came in quite late but for people that have been with it since number one i think their general consensus is that you know more recently it hasn't it has gone down so a lot of people are thinking infinite is like the make or break like they either smash it out of the park and halo is back mm-hmm. or they get it wrong again and halo is dead <laughs> yeah it's tough um, one. It, it's one of those like the rose colored glasses type of thing because mm. people loved halo back then but it was also a different time in gaming and stuff has changed dramatically and halo 5 adopted some yeah. newer stuff that's happened recently and it just it worked for some people but a lot of people are kind of like ah i got other games to play you know yeah and well the story, that's a series story that's been going on for a very long time and the people who even started it aren't even developing it anymore. So it's not like this like thread of like this my favorite creators are making this game, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's a, yeah, there's a lot of factors that are yeah. affecting it. But mm. so but those but, first three Halo games were fucking fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna drop my uh my 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 Jar Jar Binks opinion again. And okay. I really like Halo 4. Halo 4 is probably my favorite one. Yeah, that is a Jar Jar Binks opinion, man. <laughs> You know why, right? Because, <laughs> because, That's some Amiga because, bullshit right there. <laughs> but you know, you know why, right? I think I think I'm a little bit biased because when I worked at Microsoft, I I worked in test on Halo Four, nice. so I got to try Halo Four before there was a couple of abilities that never made it into the final game that were so cool in Halo Four that we got to mess around with. So that was fun. But then. When, um, but then when it came out, because for me, because I came into Halo quite late, I because I never had like an Xbox originally, so I didn't play Halo one or two or three. Uh, I, I came in at Reach, so when I first played Reach and I went into like online multiplayer, prior to that, I'd always been used to like games where you sprint in multiplayer and like you're you're free to move. And suddenly I'm playing Halo where it's like I'm not aiming down sights and I'm walking and it feels quite slow. I was like, this is quite clunky. So when they brought out Halo four, I was like, oh, this is more what I know in like shooters mm-hmm. um and i loved like all the abilities being able to go behind someone and like do the execution and like jetpack and boost and stuff i was like this is cool so yeah but i guess i'm not really a a halo diehard fan so maybe i uh yeah maybe i'll just keep my opinion to myself i actually liked four also <laughs> you know halo 4 came out at a right. weird time for me because i think like i had felt like the halo story had reached its conclusion you mm-hmm. know like so mm-hmm. when when like I'm thinking about Halo Four, I'm like, what story do you tell there? Like, what do you do here? But then also, it's like I had transitioned out of the Halo multiplayer and like kind of transitioned into Call of Duty multiplayer, so I wasn't like that into Very the Halo. Games. So it's like one of the big draws of Halo had always been the multiplayer for me, but I wasn't that interested in it anymore because I was I had transitioned into something else. So hmm. my opinion of Halo Four is very much colored by my experience at the time. Hmm. Not necessarily the quality of the title. Yeah, I enjoyed Halo 4. I had a lot of fun playing it. Reach was my favorite, but um, yeah. You're letting that Jar Jar energy infect you. (laughs) (laughs) No, I even liked some of the maps on there. They were great. Haven, I think Haven I actually really liked. They brought that back over to Halo 5 too, that map. Did they? Mm -hmm. One of the things that drove me crazy about uh, the Halo franchise over time was that they kept reusing the same maps over and over again. Like they come out with new ones, and then they they'd also bring the old ones. Like Blood Bowl always, just came back like every time, back every map. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, predictions? Any more predictions for the P- PS Five event? Um, uh, Sega's gonna roll in, drop a megaton bomb. They're gonna announce the new Sega Genesis Two. <laughs> They're gonna rock the world. To be like one ninety nine bitches, and then to walk <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> Imagine that. I mean, that's a bit, that's a bit. It's a bit expensive. I'm not sure I could quite justify that. The ultimate, that. the ultimate new console. That's the next gen right there. Sega Genesis Series X 2.0. Yeah. Five. Seventeen bits of power. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Florida Gator brings up uh, Elden Ring in chat. Do you oh, think yeah. we're gonna see anything about Elden Ring? I so I yeah. personally don't think we are. I, like, think I don't think I don't think we are. If we see remaster stuff about uh Demon Souls and Bloodborne, if that becomes official at this, mm. I don't think they're gonna talk about Elden Ring. There's too much from software stuff, you think? Yeah, yeah, potentially. 
but also that from soft announcements are usually like that's what they focus on when didn't they're... the also although it's not going to be exclusive to it didn't the Elden Ring announcement originally show in Xbox's conference mm, did I it? Think it did yeah I right. believe so because last year PlayStation I don't know PlayStation had a conference they just didn't have they were they just weren't at A3 um no 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 they didn't have a conference last year did they no no they didn't so was last year the the weird like um thing where they brought the they drag the press all over the place or was that the year before that was the year before yeah yeah oh, okay. yeah so i think i think um yeah so i i believe i believe that's the one so i, I think i think um so i think if they're gonna show it maybe that they were showing it on xbox but i agree with you i think i think like that would be a lot of from soft stuff shown in one thing and although i would love it i think it would be a, a, like a kind of a weird thing i because i almost feel like they're gonna give us demon souls and bloodborne to tide us over while they're still working on that because when you factor in still yeah. all we've seen of elden ring is like a little kind of cinematic and stuff i Whenever they do that, you kind of get the feeling that it's still quite a way away. Um, especially well, if they're working I, with the author of what is his, what's his name? Um, uh, Game of Thrones. Doesn't that guy take uh, like bajillion years? JJ yeah, Martin. JR Martin. He hasn't even like yeah. finished the storyline yet. He's, you know. He's yeah, he hasn't even like. He hasn't even finished his coffee to go start writing yet. <laughs> they're like, they've, they've completed the game plan. They're like, so so how do we improve the stories? Like, I'm going to start any day now, I promise you. And like, we kind of need to get a game out. Yes, yes, I'll He's write it. He's got the soon. title on the page. It That's says it. here you haven't even cashed a check. <laughs> 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 oh dear oh that's the one other thing i i do hope we see i know we're not going to get much from it but it would be amazing if they just dropped at least like a title uh, like a 10 second clip of final fantasy remake part two. Oh, oh i didn't even cool. think about that that would be amazing mm, that'd be yeah. real cool i that'd doubt be... it for some reason because the game just came yeah. out right hello i could see them just doing a fucking like title or whatever like the two on there, screen. yeah. Square's got no shame about that kind of thing. Part two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if, um, if all these predictions come to true, though, I mean that would be a blinder of us of a stream, right? I mean that's just so many yeah. gangbusters. What about VR? Like, do you think we'll see anything about VR? I mean, PlayStation VR has been mm. pretty successful. You know, I think they've they've mentioned in the past that the the current headset will be forward compatible with the PS5. Oh, okay. But I would imagine they are going to release another headset for the PlayStation 5. Mm, that up the visuals? Yeah. What they can do with that headset? Well, you could do a higher resolution headset for sure. Okay. But also, no, working but, with I the mean, PlayStation using, Move. I'm saying PS5 hardware with the current headset. That would up the visuals, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel but it'd like... be nice to see a higher res headset. Mm, sure, too. yeah, yeah. Obviously. I almost feel like they probably wouldn't initially because I feel like it's been big for them. But I I mean, I, I would hope, right, given the way they've been hyping up this event, I mean, it could be wrong because they have missed the ball in the past. They've kind of hyped up stuff and then it's been a bit, bit of a miss. But I would hope that if they... If they've got all their eyes on this time up until this point, and they're in like their their stance is such a great position because like Microsoft obviously got a load of cool stuff coming, but at the same time their first presentation wasn't really a great showing. So if they smash this out of the park, it's going to be huge. So I feel like if they're sensible, VR is very very cool. But I feel like attention right now in the grand scheme of things, when it's like next gen console with all the crazy games or VR, if you have to pick one, I feel like everyone's like, I don't care about VR right now. I want to know this. So I feel like if they had to pick it, I would think they would focus everything on that for now and then maybe do a VR talk later. Mm -hmm. um, That's not really what they do, though. Like, I just watched the PlayStation 4 announcement. Uh, Digital Foundry has a cool series of videos where they go back and they rewatch old E3 announcements for consoles. And, like, oh, okay, they cool. make fun. They make fun of, like, here's all the shit they talked about and here none of this shit came true. And <laughs> here's the, you know, <laughs> like, they... At the PlayStation 4 announcement, they talked forever about uh, their PlayStation Live service, which they had they had recently just bought mm -hmm. Gaikai. They had David Perry up on the stage talking about how this is going to change gaming, like being able mm -hmm. to instantly start playing a game instead of downloading it first. And like that shit obviously didn't come true. Google's still yeah. working on it, but with pretty limited success, it would appear. You know, so like a, a lot of the stuff they talk about at these press conferences isn't necessarily like the future of gaming or it's not mm. about gaming. I forgot that feature. It's really funny. Yeah. I mean, part of that actually changed the landscape of gaming, though, for real is because part of that presentation was that the PlayStation 4 would stream live to Ustream. <laughs> you know, like, oh, but yeah. I mean, the, the built in sharing service is now a standard feature. That's true. Yeah. On all 
consoles, right? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, how many how many streamers got their start by streaming on the PlayStation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, true, a lot. true. Yeah, and it prioritized Twitch streams that were streaming off of PlayStation hardware. Yeah, it didn't work great for Ustream, but really worked great for Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm excited um, yeah, to see. It'll be fun to see what they talk about. Can we talk about yeah. Sega for a little bit? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Go ahead. Right. Sega had two huge announcements. Huge. Huge. Megaton announcements. <laughs> One was they announced the new uh the game gear micro consoles <laughs> the, these things are tiny okay so are you guys familiar with the game gear yes absolutely. like it's a you know it's a it's a game boy competitor it was about the same time as the game boy game boy color it had a color screen it took six batteries that it would chew through in about seven minutes <laughs> um but it did play pretty good, good games it played master system games essentially so it was, it was like, you know, an 8-bit color console that was pretty cool. I still have mine. It doesn't work, unfortunately. It had Mortal Kombat on it, and I really wanted one. Uh-huh. It did have Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it had Gunstar Heroes. It had Sonic the Hedgehog. It had a bunch of good games. It had Ninja Gaiden. Um, anyhow, so Sega has announced these things. There, there's going to be four of them. Uh, a black one that comes with Sonic the Hedgehog, OutRun, Poyo Poyo 2, and Royal Stone. A yellow one with Shining Force, Shining Force 2, Shining Force Final Conflict, and Nazo Poyo. A blue one with Sonic and Tails, Baku Baku Animal, Gunstar Heroes, and Sylvan Tail. A red one that comes with Columns, Game Gear Shinobi, Mega Megami Tensai Gaiden, Megami Tensai Gaiden, Last Bible Special. So each one of these only comes with four games. And you get each one for a low, low price of $50. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> so I've got to buy all of them. So you mean you mean if I want all the games, I got to get. But wait, four there's more. Games. You can buy all of them, and if you do, you get a fifth one that's got a clear plastic shell. Comes with a display case, but the fifth one doesn't come with any games because it doesn't actually do anything. It's just there for show. It's a. So you buy that one, right? You buy that. One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you you got you got to do it right. I mean, you you have to buy all five. No, I don't. Th- I don't think so. I think. I think uh, maybe the blue one, maybe the black one. I mean, th- they're not. They're not confirmed for release in any English speaking territory. So I'm going to assume that the, like Shining Force, Shining Force Two, Shining Force Final Conflict, like you're not buying that one because it's all Japanese games. You're not going to be able to play them. Mm-hmm. Those are role playing games. It's same with, <laughs> you know. So anything, like I love the Game Gear Shinobi game. It's a really good game. Columns is a good game. So the red one is cool. But it comes with Megami Tensei Gaiden and Megami Tensei Gaiden Last Bible Special, which I, I don't know what those games are, to be honest with you. Then they're just um, RPGs, right? I think. Are Could they be, more right? RPGs? I assume that they yeah. were because that's what Megami Tensei is now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so like, you get two games that you can play in English speaking countries with the red one. You get Sonic Tales, uh, Gunstar Heroes, definitely. I don't know about Baku Animal and I don't know about Sylvan Tail on the blue one. Gunstar's Hero is a fantastic game on the Game Gear, but fifty dollars. Mm. <laughs> and this thing is yeah. tiny. It's hard to explain. Like in the palm of your hand, you can fit a couple of these things. Really? That is crazy. Yeah, they're tiny. They're really small. So like you can't playing any play. game on those, like it looks like a keychain kind of thing. Like you put it on the end of your keychain for fifty bucks. Like the old Tamagotchi. <laughs> When is someone gonna bring back Tamagotchis? That's what I want. Uh, I don't know. Like I would I would buy return, one. I almost bought one the other day because when I was on Instagram advert, like the old school one, an advert came back for like being able to buy them. But then they were extortionately expensive. I was like eighty pound. I'm like eighty bucks. I don't want to pay eighty pound for to like pick up some poop from this little slug mod. No. No, no, <laughs> no. So I, in all honesty, I might buy the blue one. Yeah. Because yeah. I really like Gunstar Heroes. And it'd be fun to have like this little tiny thing, but I know I'm not going to play it because it's like too small. Yeah, it's too small. Like, the form factor is like rough. But think about think about the the special display case one, the fifth one. Yeah, you know you want that. Exclusive. You know I do. Of course I do. <laughs> but like we got we got big we got big purchasing decisions this year, and I've spent a lot of money. <laughs> All right. Maybe we sh- maybe we should so, split it. What if we analog what if we pocket? Okay, Ooh. now you're talking. Now you're talking. Yeah. Here's right. how we split it. You pay for it, and I'll hold on to it. 
Okay. 50-50. <laughs> we can pay. We can go 50-50, and you can have three, and I'll have two. How about that? Eric wants the clear <laughs> you don't one. Have to play kids. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to play games. You can see, you see that it's perfect for me because I'm an incredibly busy person who can't actually play games. So if I can get the Game Gear that doesn't have games on it, I'll just be like, it's perfect. It's great. <laughs> but like, if you look at the the analog pocket is coming out, that's another you know, uh, uh, portable system, and that's going to play mm. every Game Gear game. Yeah. <laughs> we need a date for that. When is that coming out? I'm, I'm... I don't know, man. I am dying to see any it news on it. No, uh, I, I, I assume it's been delayed because of the uh, yeah. you know they'll announce it as pandemic. soon as PS5 pre-orders open up, and they'll be like, "Hey, your 599 US dollar PS5 and your game and your uh, your analog pocket." I'm like, "No." But also, like another handheld I'm looking forward to is I can't remember the name of it off the top of my hand. It's the one with the crank on it. Oh yeah, uh, you know the that one's supposed to come out this year still too. I was just actually reading about it, but yeah. that one is going to have you buy it, and then after you buy it once a week, a game is going to get unlocked on it. Right. And that's kind of neat. Yeah. Play date. That's it. Play date. Yep. Yes. Play date. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm looking forward to. I, I I think that one's gonna be relatively inexpensive too. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really cool. I definitely want that just because yeah. it just looks weird and different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then of course we still got, you know, two major home console watches. Mm. So Game gear kind of not like top of my mind. Pretty low on the list. <laughs> When I saw this, I was like, e- hmm. so you have to buy separate ones. You can't just like swap an SD card back and forth for different titles and all that. Yeah. And they're not, they're not even coming to our country. Like not, they haven't, re- they haven't announced it coming to like English speaking territories yet. So mm. like the games are going to be in Japanese. Is which Sega, for some games doesn't matter. Is Sega just like super ahead of their time? So Sega. <laughs> well, hold on. There's more Sega to talk about. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> But I mean, if these things came out at twenty bucks each, oh. I would definitely be buying. I'd buy one, yeah, right, yeah, because they're like just a stupid thing to have, like on the side, like a like next to your couch, you know, like just to mess around with. But at fifty dollars, it's just that's not priced right. Although mm-hmm. it could be, don't all those mini consoles come down in price for pretty quick? I don't know. I haven't looked at. I, I feel I feel like any mini console that isn't Nintendo, because Nintendo just hold their price, just like yeah. Yeah, so I reckon, yeah, I reckon, I reckon so. Yeah, it could be. Um, but they also had another huge tech announcement. Huge. They were one. teasing this one too, hard. So okay. Sega announced Fog Gaming. This isn't a mistranslation either. That's what I first said. Did they did they mean cloud gaming? But like somebody mistranslated it to Fog Gaming. No, it's okay. Fog. Fog like mist, like low level. Yeah. Mist. yeah. So this is going to be, they're going to use arcade cabinets <laughs> connected to the internet, which have, you know, like, you know, like computing hardware in them uh-huh. to allow for um, arcade operators can connect these things to the internet and use them to make other kinds of money, to use them as like servers or use them as uh, other types of devices. <laughs> That's all what? I guess. So you mean, so you mean, lots of rich billionaires are going to log in and start farming Bitcoin on their arcade? Machines? Yes, I think that's what they mean. I think it's going to be a Bitcoin mining thing. Is this it's secretly like, so that so you say you can make a load of money behind the scenes? They were like, yes, yes, funnel it into our arcade machines. It's completely fine. And then this is their, then this is what they can use to fund their 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 disappearance. Uh, yeah, it could be. I mean, it it seems shady. Like, why would they announce this? <laughs> So makes horrible. no sense. Like, it seems so weird. Like, and also the thing is, realistically, of all the potential computing power you could do, or you know, secure server farm, it's like, no, I'm going to go and use these arcade cabinets sitting in this dusty corner. I love arcade cabinets, to be clear, but they're going to be yeah. like, I'm going to use this dusty arcade cabinet, and instead, I'm going to use this for my business. No, I think yeah. I'd probably rather go to a server and just use that. <laughs> well, I, I think that like the thought is that these things are sitting there idle, right, at night. Mm. So like. Your arcade is open during the day. Well, it's not now, but your arcade is theoretically making money during the day. But then it's you know the the machines are still on at night. So why not use them for something? And that something is probably Bitcoin mining, even though they don't say it outright. Mm. It, it reminds me. There was I remember when uh, GPU prices were going crazy because every like Bitcoin was oh, yeah. outrageously high. Right. So what people were doing was they're buying up all the GPUs 
sticking them in server racks and just mining, 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 mining. And it got to the point where you couldn't find any uh, GPUs for computers on the shelves. Like, they just weren't there. Yeah. So that, that lasted for a long time, like six months to a year, I feel like. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, what you saw was that people were putting out these programs. They say, okay, just run this on your computer, and you'll be mining Bitcoin for us collectively, and then we'll pay you for your computer time. Mm. Like you make like if you ran it all night, you might make a dollar or something like that, you know. Which it didn't make any sense. It, it wasn't worth it because you'd use more electricity than it was exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. But this is what it feels like to me. That's the kind of the program that it seems like to me. It's just weird to see Sega. <laughs> what a weird announcement yeah. from Sega. <laughs> yeah, and like people were generally excited because genuinely excited because Sega. You know, people have a lot of love in their hearts for Sega. Me included. Yeah, definitely. You know. Going back to the 16-bit days and the Dreamcast, you know mm-hmm. they they made some awesome games. They were they just spoke to like a teenage person in a way that I think was in a, in a formative time. That you know people have a lot of love for them. Yeah, mm, and they gave you something yeah, like yeah. this. It's just so bizarre, a little strange. Yeah. And they and they just came off of the Sega like that awesome Genesis Mini that was really fantastic to life. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I feel like it was diversion. I feel like there's some some behind the scenes Sega Yakuza boss who's like, "Yo, we need to make some money. Let's do this. So we'll, we'll we'll peddle them some small consoles. We'll give them a fifth console that doesn't actually do anything, and then secretly they'll mine loads of money in our arcade machines. And then every 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 day we'll open up the back of the arcade machine, take some of the coins out, and uh, we'll make loads of money. The Yakuza and Sega are allegedly very closely tied together I am for not a surprised. long time. I am not surprised. If you, if, there are some really great YouTube videos about like the ties, like really strong ties, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yep. That's, 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 that's how they're going to do it. The Sega's going to make a comeback. It'll be like the next generation. They're just slowly doing this. And they're siphoning all the money. And then they're going to be like, when, when PS6 goes to go be announced, Sega is going to come back at E3 and be like, we're back. We've oh. made the next generation console. Sega Pluto! It's like it's got thirty teraflops in just one side of the console. That's right. <laughs> Do they ever have a cooling. Jupiter? A Jupiter? What's that? Well, there was the Sega Saturn. No. You know, like I feel like that might have been a code oh, name or something. Oh, oh, no, oh, it I sounds yeah, it sounds familiar. <laughs> Prior said the Pluto, the Sega Pluto, the Pluto, <laughs> Sega <laughs> <The> Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Uh, I mean, Sega's actually doing awesome stuff right now. Like, if you look at the Switch and uh, Google Sega Ages, they are making like awesome ports of old video games. Like, really good. Like, if you get Outrun, like, there's a bunch of cool modes in there. Um, they have like old graphics and new graphics. Same with virtual racing. Like, there's really cool stuff. Yeah. They got M2 doing like a bang up job on like making these things feel fresh again. But, uh, it's weird. Then they also Bitcoin and mining on fog arcade hardware. gaming. <laughs> fog gaming, you yeah. know, fog that that stuff that makes you not be able to see what's right in front of your face. <laughs> it's just so weird to be like fog gaming, but then have it be like a a data mining type of network that you use when you're not actually using your arcade machines. They're just trying to obscure your vision, so you just can't I mean, see what's really going on. They haven't said it outright, but that's what it that's what it reads as. That's what it sounds like. It's true. Yeah, here, here's an article from um, uh, VGC where they say oh, yeah. the tech will allow arcades to divert the CPU and GPU power of their machines for other purposes and commercially adds the benefit of being able to make money outside of business hours. And what else? <laughs> yeah, are you, like, what is that? Farming. <laughs> <laughs> Either that, or they just can use it to like launder money. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> just they're making millions of half penny transactions across yeah. the world. <laughs> It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay, that is super weird, man. Yeah, yeah. Super, super weird. My heart goes out to Sega. <laughs> I, I hope I hope things turn out better. People yeah, were hoping yeah. that it was going to be like the announcement of something new, like a, a Sega Saturn like Mini or a Sega Dreamcast. Like you said, Mini. the Sega Pluto. The yeah. Pluto, man. Nothing. <gasps> Miss opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I've been trying to buy a Sega Saturn recently. I want to get one modded for uh, RGB mm. output 
so then I can then hook it up to something that uh, can convert RGB to HDMI. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And then I'm going to also add uh, an optical disc emulator so that you can put a uh, a uh, memory card into it instead of buying all the discs. Because buying Sega Saturn games is expensive. Okay. But you can download them all for free. That my physical <laughs> copy is tough. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, is that side quest? Do we get anything I else? I think so. That was on the I list. mean, like it was appropriately side questy. It was side I questing. Think, I, think <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's the week. Exactly. Yeah. That is the week. Uh, we touched on it just briefly, barely at the beginning of the show, but um, obviously all the stuff that's going around the world right now, hmm. it's, you know, it's very important to to not lose the momentum that's going on with the Black Lives yes. Matter movement. So if you guys are out there protesting peacefully, um, thank you. That's amazing. And I know stuff is developing, but it's a, it's a long road. There's a lot of changes that have to happen with that stuff. So it's not going to just get fixed from a week of protesting. This is, this is the type of stuff that is going to take a lot of effort from a lot of people around the world. Absolutely. But also obviously a lot of policy changing that has to happen in, um, in America. And that's going to happen from protesting, from speaking out and voting on all levels from federal, state, local, all those are incredibly important to make actual change happen in your neighborhood, in your state, in in the country for United States. Uh, so that's extremely important. If you want to join the movement and get more involved, which I highly encourage, go to blacklivesmatter.com and you can you can sign petitions, you can donate to organizations that are trying to make big changes happen. You can help go to uh, organize and help go to peaceful protests. And I emphasize peaceful because that's the way you make these type of changes happen. So, um, yeah. So thank you to everyone out there who's doing that stuff. And don't lose momentum, you know? Yeah. Don't lose momentum. Sure. It's got to carry. It's got to carry forward. So. Also, shout out, shout out for Pride Month. Uh, yes. I got... As a father, I got nothing but big, big daddy hugs for all you. Love you. There you go. DCP stands by all you guys. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Um, yeah, that's the show. We'll be we'll most likely have another one next week that's going to have juicy news for uh, PS5. Yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Play Bingo Part Two. Yeah, it's Bingo Part Two. Um, <laughs> And then DCP Live will be back on uh, Thursday as well, obviously, with the new stuff that's happening in Destiny. Always exciting to have uh, new content. So thanks for right. watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find more of me, I'm uh, at Teft on Twitter. And you can catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft, where I'm streaming video games. And I'm also doing music as well with my wife. Uh, if you search Tefty and Memes, that's two E's, M-E-E-M-S on YouTube, you'll see videos of us making music and being creative and all that. That's what we've been doing on YouTube. Uh, you can find me over on Twitter at Arix or YouTube at Arix Gaming, uh, where this week we'll be talking about lots of PlayStation stuff when it happens. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. I'm Brian Rabbit. You can find me um, trying and failing over and over again to jailbreak my PS Vita. <laughs> um, it's been a slow uh, yeah. road. I need to do that. <laughs> that's really annoying. Yeah, unless you have one of the old ones with the old firmware, really, really annoying. I got I got both, but I lost the power connector for that, so I ordered a new power connector for the no. old one. So I'm trying to do the new one. It, mm, it's not going great. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to an update on that next week, bro. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week. Uh, shout out to everyone supporting us on uh, Twitch, Patreon, and uh, all the various listening channels. We really appreciate it, guys. We will see you next week. Bye, everyone. See you later. Bye.